Hello viewers, yes, this is Ranjana ma'am and you are watching yes, mine as well as your channel. And this time, yes, you all know the thumbnail says it, it is for my ICSE students, Julius Caesar, Act 1, Scene 3. Yes, you've been waiting for this for a long time. So, it's no, there is no need wasting any more time. But you know what's coming before I start, I always do. If you have not subscribed to my channel up till now, please do. And don't forget to press the like button. I'm sure you like it. So let's start. So, Act 1, Scene 3. This is again... Rome a street. So what is happening is in a street in Rome. And this is a very important scene. Why? Because several anomalies have been witnessed by the people in this scene. So what happens? Who comes first? Thunder and lightning enter from opposite sides, Casca with his sword drawn. So his sword is not in his sheath, it is in his hand. He has the sword in his hand. So from two sides, one side Cicero comes and from the other side Casca comes. Cicero, good evening Casca, brought you Caesar home. Why are you breathless and why stare you so? So Cicero, when he sees Casca, he is asking him that yes Casca, good evening. So, did you take Caesar home? And why do you seem to be panting? Why are you out of breath? And why do you look so frightened? Casca, are not you moved when all the sway of the earth shakes like a thing unfirmed? O oh, Caesar, I've seen tempests when the scolding winds have raved the naughty oaks. And I have seen the ambitious ocean swell and rage and foam to be exalted with the threatening clouds. But never till tonight, never till now, did I go through a tempest dropping fire. Either there is a civil strife in heaven or else the world, too saucy with the gods, incenses them to send destruction. So Casca seems to be very alarmed, he seems to be panic stricken and when Cicero asks him that why do you seem to be so scared or frightened, he says that aren't you frightened? Why? Because nature is, a, the laws of nature, they are not acting as if in a way it is expected of them. So I have experienced many horrible storms, tempests, when the Storms have rived open the oak trees. The oak trees are very powerful. But the storms, the violent storms have rived open the oak trees. I have seen this type of storms. I have also seen the waves of the storm rise mountain high. That the waves of the sea, they rise mountain high on account of the storm. That means the storm has made the waves of the sea rise to the height of a mountain. I have witnessed that also. But up till now, I have never seen a storm which is raining fire. That means fire is falling from the heavens. So what does he think? The reason behind the raining of fire. He says either there is a civil war. That means either the gods are fighting among themselves or they are angry. The human beings have provoked the gods. The gods are angry with human beings and that is why by dropping fire to the earth they are sending down signs of destruction. Either they are fighting in heaven or they are sending down the fire to as a sign of destruction because they are angry with the behavior of human beings. So the gods are angry and that is why they are sending these destruction. So gods are, the humans have as if provoked the gods. And that is why 
गॉड्स आर सेंडिंग डाउन डिस्ट्रक्शन ऑन दिस वर्ल्ड सीजरो नेचुरली ही आस व्हाई सो यू एनीथिंग मोर वंडरफुल सो डू यू हैव यू सीन एनीथिंग मोर देन व्हिच यू हैव ऑलरेडी मेंशनड यू हैव सेड दैट यू हैव अर्लियर नॉट टुडे यू हैव अर्लियर विटनेस्ड स्टॉर्म्स स्प्लिटिंग ओक ट्रीज यू हैव सीन द वेव्स rise mountain high on account of the storms but today you have seen as if fire dropping from the skies on account of the storm so other than this have you seen anything more strange so he says a common slave you know him well by sight held up his left hand which did flame and burn like 20 torches joined and yet his hand not sensible to of fire remain unscorched so my god this is something very horrible he says that i saw a common slave an ordinary slave even you know him you might not know him by the name but if you see him by face you will know him and what did this slave do he was holding up his hand and his hand was burning as if 20 torches how is the flame on his hand if you put 20 torches together the way the fire burns his hand was burning in that way but he did not feel any sensation of burning he did not feel the burning sensation what else besides i have not since put my up my sword against the capital i met a lion who glazed upon me and went surly by without annoying me so the second anomalous thing which he sees that he had seen a lion in the capital and since then he had drawn up his sword to protect himself from the lion and he has not put his sword back into the sheath so how did the lion react on seeing kaska the lion looked at him angrily but he did not harm him he just went away he looked at him angrily he glazed at him with anger in his eyes but he did not harm or attack kaska probably he had seen the drawn sword or whatever but he did not attack he just went past went by without harming what else and there were drawn upon a heap a hundred ghastly women transformed with their fear who swore they saw men all in fire walk up and down the streets then they found uh, he found a lot of women gathered together they were looking deathly pale why because they were very frightened they had seen something which had frightened them and what had these women seen they had seen men surrounded by fire walking up and down the streets so imagine you see a man surrounded by fire walking up and down the streets like the slave which kaska had seen kaska had seen the slave himself and this is reported to him by the women who all stood very frightened looking ghastly pale so this one this information he got from these women that men all in fire were walking up and down the streets and he had seen a slave whose hand was burning as if 20 torches put together but he did not feel any sensation of burning so same for these men also they did not have the sensation of burning and they were walking up and down the streets without shouting or screaming and yesterday the bird of night which is the bird of night the owl did sit even at noon day upon the market place hooting and shrieking another abnormal thing happening so the bird of night is the owl so it had come out during day time and it sat at the center of the market and it was hooting owl hoot so it was hooting and shouting which is very abnormal the owls they are the creatures of the night nocturnal creatures when these prodigies do so conjointly meet let not men say these are their reasons they are natural for i believe they are portentous things unto the climate that they point upon so so many abnormal things happening together so he says when so many strange things are happening at the same time it is very useless it is 
just useless to say oh this these are natural causes because according to casca they are they are leading they are signals that something horrible is going to happen they are maybe alarming signals as if something horrible is going to happen so these are the bad omens which are signifying something horrible might take place or would take place not might might is a probability would take place is about to take place cicero indeed it is a strange disposed time but men may construe things after their fashion fleeing from the purpose of the things themselves come caesar to the capital tomorrow so uh, cicero also agrees yes these are different times strange times queer times but different people might interpret these things in a different manner i might interpret as it suits me you might interpret the reason in a different way another person may interpret the cause of these things in a different way and arrive at different conclusions and they may be very far away from the reality and then he inquires is caesar coming to the senate house tomorrow so the capital is the senate house the parliament so is caesar coming tomorrow he doth for he did bid antonius send word to you he would be there tomorrow so casca says yes he is going to the capital because he has sent word to antonio or rather mark antonius means mark antony he has sent word to mark antony to tell you that he will be there at the capital tomorrow good night then casca this disturbs sky is not to walk in so cicero bids good bye to casca because this type of sky this type of bad weather is not suitable to walk that means you should not remain outside in this sort of bad weather farewell cicero so cicero leaves and now who comes the main conspirator cassius who's there cassius casca a roman cassius casca by your voice so cassius is very clever he can hear footsteps and identify the person in the darkness he can identify a person by his voice so he has good qualities he is very alert he can identify people but he is jealous and that is what creates a lot of trouble not only for rome but also not only for himself but also for rome casca by your voice so he identifies casca by the voice casca your ear is good cassius what night is this so casca compliments cassius that yes you have a good ear you can identify people by their voice and then he says cassius what a strange night is this cassius very clever he knows what to say in order to achieve his own ends He has now come here to convince Casca to join the conspiracy. So he will talk in a likewise manner. So he says, "A very pleasing night to honest men." So this night, honest people need not fear this night. Whoever knew the heavens menace so? Casca doesn't understand what he is hinting at. So he says. how could the heavens have been so threatening we had no idea that the heavens could be so dangerous so threatening so ominous those that have known the earth so full of faults yes the people who know that the earth is full of faults they know that the heavens can be so threatening or ominous for my part i have walked about the streets submitting me into the perilous night and thus embraced casca as you see have bared my bosom to the thunderstone and when the cross blue lightning seemed to open the breast of heaven i did present myself even in the aim and very flash of it this is cassius 
he always tries to show he is an honest person, he is a brave person, like he did to Brutus in Act One, Scene Two. He is doing the same to Casca. He needs to brainwash Casca, manipulate him, and try to show he is a very honest citizen. He is a lover of Rome and all that. So he says that I, I am not afraid, and I am an honest person, so I am not afraid of anything. So I am walking in the streets. and i have not tried to escape the dangers of the night like cicero said this is not a night to be seen walking about and he leaves but he is saying i am walking in the streets i am not afraid of the dangers why because i am an honest person and i know nothing will happen to me mm. and he says that yes i have unbuttoned my coat mm. and i have bared my breast i have exposed my breast to the lightning I have stood in the way of the lightning. So naturally, Casca is confused. What does he mean by all this? So what does Casca say? But wherefore did you so much tempt the heavens? It is part of men to fear and tremble when the most mighty gods, by token, send such dreadful heralds to astonish us. So Casca's reaction is very natural. He is asking that why did you bare your breast? to the anger of these elements these are natural elements in their worst form the storm the thunder the lightning so why did you expose yourself to it when these things happen they are as if an alarm or a warning given by the gods and we should be frightened not exposing ourselves we should be frightened we should uh tremble in fear rather than expose ourselves to the horrible uh, to the ominous threatenings of the night you are dull casca cassius knows very well casca is not dull he had told this to brutus when brutus had said that in his youth he was in his childhood days he was quite uh, bright but now he's become dull cassius had said no he is not dull cassius knows very well that casca is not dull but now he is just doing all this to incite or provoke casca so what does he say you are dull casca and those parts of life that should be in a roman you do want or else you use not so he says that casca you you are not a witty person you don't understand fast you are not a fast person in matters of understanding something either you don't have that heroism in you which roman should have romans were noted for their heroism either you lack them or you are not using them if you have them you are not using them or it may be that you don't have them you look pale and gaze and put on fear and cast yourself in wonder to see the strange impatience of the heavens but if you would consider the true cause why all these fires why all these gliding ghosts why birds and beasts from quality and kind why old men fools and children calculate why all these things change from their ordinance their natures and preformed faculties to monstrous quality why you shall find that heaven had infused them with these spirits to make them instruments of fear and warning unto some monstrous state so he gives a long speech to convince casca that these are happening because something horrible is to take place so he says that you become pale your face has lost color you have become pale and you seem to be frightened you are very amazed because of the disturbance that you that you see in the night the disturbances which you see in the night has made you frightened has made you pale but if you try to find out the real cause of these strange sights why are these happening why fire is falling from the skies 
why are the ghosts walking with fire on their body up and down why birds and bees birds means the creature of the night which casta had said out a beast the lion walking in the capital so why are they behaving in an abnormal manner against their normal behavior why are they acting and a lion should not be walking in the streets of a city they should be in the forest but it has left the forest and it is walking in the streets of rome owl should be hooting at night but it is hooting in the market place during day time so why are these anomalous things happening try to understand the reason why are old men and they are light hearted and why are children very serious children should be light hearted and old men should be serious but why are they behaving in a opposite fashion and why these things which why are all these things acting in a very contrary manner opposite manner then you will understand that it is they are behaving in this way because it is god's will god is sending a warning of some terrible disaster through these abnormal happenings these abnormal happenings are taken place because of god's will through this god is trying to warn us of a horrible disaster that is about to take place now could i cast a name to the man most like the dreadful night that thunders lightens open graves and roars as doth the lion in the capital a man no mightier than thyself for me in personal action yet prodigious grown and fearful as these strange eruptions are so whatever he says at the end he will bring the reference of julius caesar as he had done with brutus so he has to convince casca that julius caesar is nothing more powerful than you or i but he has suddenly been elevated to a high position but he is just like us just like any of us so he says i could tell you of a person who resembles this horrible night the night is horrible but i can tell you of a person also who is like the night this person seeing him the hearts of people get filled with fear he is roaring like the lion or the thunder graves open up like in the night the graves are opening and the ghosts are walking here and there in the same way on account of in graves open up and lions are roaming in the capital but regarding his real power he is no greater than either you or i he has suddenly become very high abnormally grown to great heights in the same way as these horrible nights are this horrible night is abnormal it is not expected of the night to behave in this manner in the same way this man also has reached abnormal heights this caesar that you mean is it not cassius so casca he has been told dull so he uses his brain and he says oh cassius is talking about caesar so he says you are talking about cassius right you are talking about caesar right cassius cassius is very clever he won't mention the name so what does he say let it be who it is for romans now have limbs thews and limbs like to their ancestors but who the while our fathers minds are dead and we are governed with our mother spirits our yoke and sufferings show us womanish so he says oh let it be who it is it does not matter who the person is he won't say yes it is caesar let the person be whoever it is but what i want to point out is that romans physically they have in they have inherited their ancestors physical appearance strong powerful but they have strong limbs their muscles are also strong that means physically they have inherited the traits of their ancestors but they lack the spirit of their ancestors the romans were great heroes 
but the spirit that heroic spirit is lacking in the romans which was in their ancestors it is lacking in the present day romans why they are governed by the spirits feminine spirits their spirits are not masculine anymore they are governed by their mother spirits that means women are supposed to be tender they get easily frightened so men of rome they physically they appear like their forefathers like their ancestors but the spirits they have inherited it from their mothers Moth females they are ready to submit to oppression so the romans they have accepted the oppression and tyranny of caesar and this is what he is pointing out that the romans have inherited their mother spirit and that that is the reason why they have submitted to the oppression or tyranny of the times he is not mentioning the name caesar our yoke and suffering show us womanish so our sufferings and our bondage are accepting the bondage shows us womanish casca indeed so yes we agrees yes you are right they say the senators tomorrow mean to establish caesar as a king and he shall wear his crown by sea and land in every place save here in italy so cassius knows all this but casca feels that cassius is not aware so he is informing that i have heard that the senators they plan to crown caesar as the king so he will be wearing his crown in other places but not in italy so other than italy he will be able to wear his crown everywhere i know where i will wear this dagger then so cassius is again indirectly provoking casca i know where i will wear this dagger then so if caesar is crowned king i know what i will do with my dagger that means i will stab myself with my dagger if caesar is crowned the king because i'm not going to accept his tyranny i'm not going to submit myself to his tyranny cassius from bondage will deliver cassius so cassius will free himself from bondage how by stabbing himself with his own dagger there in ye gods you make the weak most strong therein ye gods you tyrants do defeat so he says in this is how even a weak person can become strong god has given even a weak person the power to get himself free from bondage how by killing himself so in this way the tyrants are defeated the tyrant can keep you in a prison your physical body he can imprison but if you kill yourself he cannot imprison your soul so a person can free himself from the prison how by killing himself you can imprison the physical body you can't imprison the soul of the person not stony tower nor walls of beaten brass nor airless dungeon nor strong links of iron can be retentive to the strength of spirit so yes nothing is as powerful to create to imprison a brave spirit a brave spirit can never be confined you can confine the physical body of a person but you cannot confine so there are no prison whether it is a prison made of stone whether it is uh, the prison is made of brass whether the prison is the dark dungeons or a person is chained in his prison but they are not powerful enough to imprison the soul of a person a brave spirit cannot be kept imprisoned in this way but life being weary 
of these worldly bars never lacks power to dismiss itself so if a man <coughs> is really sick of his this imprisonment he is really sick of life so no one can stop him from taking his own life if i know this know all the world decides so <coughs> if i am aware of the power of the spirit so i also know and everyone also knows this that it is within me i have the power within me to free or emancipate myself from the tyranny under which i am living i know how to free myself if i am aware that the spirit is very powerful and no one can keep a spirit in prison if this knowledge is within me if i am aware of this knowledge i know how to free myself so that means if i if julius caesar becomes the king i will not subject myself to his tyranny i will not become a slave i will kill myself and free myself from his bond from the bondage thunder still so can i so every bondman in his own hand bears the power to cancel his captivity so kaska says even i can do the same in fact every slave he has within him the power to free himself from his captivity cassius and why should caesar be a tyrant then poor man i know he would not be a wolf but that he sees the romans are but sheep he were not lion he were no lion were not romans hinds <clears throat> so he says why should caesar be a tyrant be an oppressor i am so sad for him poor fellow if the romans were wolves he would not have been a wolf but he knows that the romans are like deer they are timid and my meek like a deer and that is why he poses to be a lion among them why does he pose to be a lion why does he uh, seem why does he project himself as threatening as a lion because he knows oh these romans they have a feminine spirit they don't have that fearful spirit of their ancestors they are they are meek and gentle like a lamb or a female deer they are like sheep and that is why he poses as a lion or a wolf and frightens them if romans behave like uh, lions or wolves themselves then caesar would not have tried to frighten them or be tyrannical with them those that with haste will make a mighty fire begin it with weak straws what trash is rome what rubbish and what of fell when it serves for the base matter to illuminate so vile a thing as caesar so he is trying to bring caesar down so he says that people who want to build a big fire how do they start they start with insignificant things first they put straws and rubbish waste stuff and these romans so yes these are all the waste stuff with that they try to build a quick fire with the rubbish and all the discarded things and straws why because they want to make a big fire very quickly so <clears throat> these romans they are acting present day romans they are acting like those cheap straws cheap things to build fire so that caesar can become glorious caesar is using these weak romans to make himself glorious but oh grief where hast thou led me i perhaps speak this before a willing bondman then i know my answer must be made but i am armed and dangers are to me indifferent and after saying so many things to provoke casca he is telling my personal sadness has 
made me so overwhelmed that I have spoken all these things. But I have opened my heart maybe to someone who is willing to suffer bondage at the hands of Caesar. And then I know I must have to pay a heavy price for revealing my heart to that person. But I am not afraid. And I don't care for whatever might happen to me. That means he is telling Casca indirectly that Casca is willing to be a slave and I have opened my heart and told everything about Caesar to him. He, if he goes and reports it to Caesar, I will have to face severe consequences on account of it. But I am not afraid. He knows Casca is not like this. Casca is not a person to go and re re uh, report it. He is just provoking Casca. So what does Casca say? You speak to Casca and to such a man that is no fleering telltale. Hold my hand. Be factious for redress of all these griefs and I will set this foot of mine as far as who goes farthest. So now this is one what Cassius had wanted to come out from Casca. He is incited Casca and Casca says, You are not talking to any ordinary willing bond man. You are talking to Casca. And I am not a person to go and betray the confidence of my friend. So, I am not a scornful telltale. Like in Hindi, no, we call Chugal Khor. So, I am not that type of person. You know Caesar, Cassius was saying this behind your back. I am not that type of person. I am not a person to betray the trust of my friend. And then he offers his hand to Cassius. And he says that if you want, I am ready to join you in any enterprise to redress the griefs which you have to bring uh, reforms to the tyrannical times. I am ready to join hands with you. And I am ready to do, I am ready to put my foot forward as that person who goes farthest. That means I want to join anyone who can bring a reform to the state of Rome. Rome is going through a very critical time and I am ready to join that person who wants to bring a reform in Rome. This is what Cassius had wanted and now he is happy and he says there is a bargain made. Yeah, so they, let this, there is a bargain made. Yes, let's come to an agreement. Now know you Casca, I have moved already some certain of the noblest minded Romans to undergo with me an enterprise of honourable, dangerous consequence. And I do know by this they stay for me in Pompey's port. For now this fearful night there is no stir or walking in the streets, and the complexion of the element in favours like the work we have in hand, most bloody, fiery and most terrible. So now he reveals his mind to Casca. He is convinced that yes, I have Casca now willing to join me. So he says, Casca, I have already persuaded some notable Romans, some famous Romans, and they are joining me in something which is honorable, but it can have dangerous results. It is dangerous. The results are honorable but dangerous. And they are waiting for me where? At Pompey's Porsche. And since this is a horrible night, the streets are solitary. No people in the streets. So our gathering won't be noticed by anyone. So our task is also and the complexion of the element in favors like the work we have in hand. So the nature or the atmosphere or the weather is just like the work we have in hand. What is our work? Our work is bloody, fiery and horrible as the night is. The night is also bloody, fiery, horrible. 
fiery of course men all in fire uh, slave with fire fire dropping from the heavens and hard so is our work our mission enter sina stand close a while for here comes one in haste kaska hears the footsteps of someone and he says someone is coming in a hurry so let's uh, hide ourselves this sina i know him by his gait i told you he has a very nice ear hearing the footsteps he can identify hearing the voice he can identify so he says oh it is sina and he is a friend sina where he stays so, so where are you going in a hurry to find out you who's that metal symbol so sina says i i was in a hurry searching for you and who is that with you is he metal symbol he is pointing out to kaska he cannot identify kaska in the darkness kish is no no he is not metal symbol it is kaska one incorporate to our attempts am i not state for sina so yes he is also a partner in our attempts he is also a fellow person <coughs> he is also together with us in our plans in our enterprise and then he asks whether he is being waited for whether people are waiting for him or not i am glad on it yes i am happy that he has joined us what a fearful night is this there is two or three of us have seen strange sights then he remarks on the horrible night and two or three people have seen seen horrible sight even kaska has seen stacius has seen am i stayed for tell me so are people waiting for me tell me that yes you are yes cassius people are waiting for you oh cassius if you could but win the noble brutus to our party and sina expresses his desire that if cassius could one cassius and brutus they are brothers in law so cassius if you only could make convince brutus to join us be you content good sina take this paper and look you lay it in the praetor's chair where brutus may but find it and throw this in at his window set this up with wax upon old brutus's statue all this done repair to pompey's porch where you shall find us is dc is brutus and trebenius there so he says you don't have to worry about brutus and he gives him those letters which he has written in several and writings and he hands over these letters and he tells sina to put them at different places so that brutus might find them the first one he says to put it in the chair where brutus sits so he will obviously see it. then he gives a second letter and he says throw it through the window in his room and then he gives another one and he says paste this with wax stick this with wax to old brutus that means brutus's ancestor junius brutus paste this to his statue or wax yeah paste this with wax to old brutus's statue and after you have done this come to pompey's port where we are supposed to be and then he asked the name of two of the conspirators trebenius and decius brutus have they also come all but metellus symbol yeah everyone is there with the exception of metellus symbol and he is gone to seek you at his house why is metellus symbol not there he is gone to search for you at your house he is the leader but once brutus comes he will automatically give the leadership to brutus because brutus is more acceptable to the people of rome well i will hide and so bestow these papers as you bade me so i will hurry and uh, do away with these letters as you have ordered me that done repair to pompey's theater come casca you and i will yet our day so yes after having done it come to pompey's theater where all of them are waiting and then he tells casca come you and i will yet our day see brutus as his house to so we we will go and visit brutus at his house three parts of him is ours already so i have convinced him 75 persons of the four parts three parts i have already convinced him only one part is left and the main and man entire upon our next encounter he will see us so the next time we meet him 
we will completely come with that man that means that one part or the 25% which is remaining it will be ours that means brutus will be 100% ours when we meet him next and when is he going to meet next tonight only oh he sits high in all the people's hearts and that which would appear offense in us his countenance like richest alchemy will change to virtue and to worthiness so what a high opinion casta has of brutus and that is very correct he says that brutus sits on a high pedestal in the eyes of the romans he is in a held in high esteem in the hearts of the people of rome if we do something which people might consider wrong but if brutus does it they will praise him and support him the same thing done by us the people might consider it wrong but if it is done by brutus they will have no doubts that it is a praiseworthy act and they will support it. so regarding the murder of julius caesar also if we do it we will be considered as wrong and people will rise against it but if brutus does it they will feel there is a reason for brutus is doing so him and his worth and our great need of him you have right well conceded let us go for it is after midnight and ere day we will awake him and be sure of him so cassius says yes you have very rightly estimated the worth of brutus how valuable he is to us so yes let's leave it is already midnight and before the night is over we will meet him we will visit him and make sure that he is completely ours that means make sure that he joins our conspiracy so this is where act 1 scene 3 comes to an end then you will have act 2 where julius caesar seems to be alarmed by all these strange sights and first they will go to brutus's house and convince him to join and then in another scene caesar will seem to be worried about the abnormal things happening and he will decide against going to the capital but then dcs brutus comes and convinces him and so he agrees to go and in act 3 scene 1 the ghastly or rather the climax where caesar is assassinated by the senators under brutus and cassius so this part comes to an end act 1 scene 3 bye for the time being and wait for my next videos of julius caesar